Welcome fellow painters and decorators of the interweb. This is Phil Beck with your professional painter and decorator. Today we're talking about a paint you've probably never even heard of and up until the last few years I'd never even heard of them. Now if you're in the know, if you're into what's going on in the industry, WRX paint, I'm not talking about Subarus, I'm not talking about Japanese manufacturer of cars and um, a paint for a WRX, you know, World Rally Championship and all like that. We're talking about WRX paint. Now, their parent company, shall I say, are called Akali Inc. Now, they're a Turkish manufacturer. They're the fifth largest paint producer in Europe. Now, Akali Paints, i.e. WRX Paints, are looking at promoting themselves forward to make it the third largest paint manufacturer supplier in Europe. That's some going isn't it? We all know about Axco Noble, Australia ICI, PPG, they rule the world don't they? I'm not saying rule the world but we've got we've got an underdog coming through. Now over the, oh, I've got to point to that shoulder, I've been doing product testing, product testing of paints and I don't get any sponsorship i don't get well porsche if you're listening i love sponsorship by porsche not happening it's not happening but i do pick up sample tins and i do get people sending me the odd sample tin just to try out now you know what i'm like i'm doing doris the door there'll be a green color you've probably seen previous videos where i've painted and sprayed doris the door a different color so i could do future videos now this future video i don't know when you're watching it in comparison of when all the other videos came forward but this is Doris the Door getting good. <laughs> Doris the Door. Uh, get me words out. I've not even had a drink. Doris the Door is going to be painted with WRX paint. Now, this sample I've got, and you've seen the thumbnail, I managed to pick up at the painting and decorating show back in November. Um, in the UK, we have a painting and decorating show in Coventry. It's roughly mid to end of November. I managed to pick up a tin of satin wood. Now, previous comments on previous videos doing paint testing people have been shouting saying Phil 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 you've got to try WRX paint now very kind it's been very kind of David at WRX to say Phil take a sample tin so you can see not paid for it there's no sponsorship no money's changed hands it was just anybody could have oh, say anybody anybody somebody could have picked up a tin of this satin wood paint um, 750 mil and it is oh it says somewhere on it sample so i'm no uh, i'm not being treated any better than anybody else you you probably pick one up as well but this gives me the opportunity to try and i only need small amounts of paint to test out so if you are a paint manufacturer or a bit of an independent and you have got some sample paints that you'd like me to try please get in touch samples don't mind samples but what we're going to do we're going to paint part of Doris the door in this satin wood. I'm going to work straight out the tin. I know the talk is with WRX paint you do pour a bit of water in it to thin it down. We cannot, it's easier to add water than take water away. So let's try it straight out the tin. And I've said to you before on previous videos, your temperature of your paint and your environment that you're in can determine how thick that paint feels. If you've got a warm day, it thins your paint down. This is water-based paint. It's still the same principle. It can ease the paint just with the temperature. And I've probably said on a previous video when I've um, gave an example, I've sprayed ceilings using anti-reflex too. Ticarilla. It's been on a warm underfloor heated floor. And throughout the course of the day, I've seen pressure drops from 1800 down to 1500 because of the warmth of the paint. It's the same principle. If you've got a cold day, that's gonna feel thick. You probably wanna add a bit of water to it. It's about the part of Move on from that. I'm not telling you the basics of painting, but I am gonna try this out. We know Doris the door's a bit of a deep color. I'm under the no illusions that this won't go for two coats. That's great. I want to see how the paint feels. I've got a lovely Arrowworthy brush. I'll use a nice Arrowworthy brush and we'll see what one coat's like and two coats like. Give a bit of a conclusion. We know we'll probably need three because it's a dark colour, but let's just see what the finish is like for a satin wood. They also do, um, 
I've, I've actually got a tin of it because I wanted to try the eggshell. So I've, this is a satin wood and in the future you'll probably see a video on um, eggshell that I've probably done before or after this. But for now it's satin wood by WRX Paints which is a Turkish company. I'm going to say a brand leader, probably they will be in the next two to three years you'll have heard of them a lot more. They don't just do paint either so if you do want to google WRX Paints they manufacture quite a number of different product products not just paint quite an interesting company to read up on so um, I don't want to go history of WRX paints I'll give you a brief breakdown right let's get the paint out I've said enough I'm back I've got me slash cut Arrowworthy it's a nice bristle you've probably seen product testing of all the brushes um, what, what do you think of those give us some comments I like commenting Right, I've just put the little pot in um, one of the, oh, what do you call it, yeah, it was the easy um, kettle, it's like paper mache, so I can work out of that. This little pot, 750, is room in it if you do want to add a bit, a bit of water to it, but for now, let's see what it's like straight out. If I do one coat and say it could need a bit of water, a splash of water, 10%, I will tell you, but let's just see what it's like straight out because that is a good guide for how the paint will be if it feels a bit too round if it feels a bit too thick if it's pulling a little bit a splash of water will help so um let's get this um pot of doris the door painted feels thin it actually feels quite thin in the tub working from one side of my kettle as well right whip the sides in first that actually goes on quite smoothly it does feel thin I'd actually say the way it feels I don't want to thin it has anybody commented on this studio that I've set up at my house it's quite handy to have a bit of a studio to work in a bit of a dust sheet and a plastic sheet over it to protect it from when I'm painting and spraying It's just unfortunate that my car's outside. I can't put, can't pull my car back into the garage because I've got everything in, in here. But I hope. I'm putting plenty on. I'm not brushing it out. Well, it feels quite nice. If you can hear that noise in the background, I've just got a heater blown just to keep the air a nice even temperature. Now, I'm not worrying about too much about me brushing and me laying off. I'm just trying to get it on for this first coat. So, so, oh, so far, so good. That actually feels really nice. As I say, I'm not expecting that to cover for one or two. Right, for, I'm just going to crack on and we'll fast forward this lot. say that was quite nice um, to apply I know people have picked up before on um, when I say it goes on easy some people don't want an easy paint to apply I want an easy paint to apply but I do understand when some of you have commented and says it's not about how easy the application is for me it is it's how hard wearing it is and long term mm -mm, I should say it how it stands up long term I totally understand that but if you're a DIYer or a professional we like to put paints on uh, particularly a DIY you're going to want to put a paint on that's easy to apply if you struggle applying a paint 
you're going to go, oh, you're not going to get best results. If a paint goes on smooth, I'll try and put it in layman terms. If a paint goes on smooth and silky and in inverted commas easy, you're more likely to actually go back to that paint and say, that was a nice paint to apply, I'll use it again. Now this went on nice. I'll just read what it says on the tin. It says, pure acrylic, which is good, like Bedeck. Have a look over my shoulder, Bedeck paints are pure acrylic. It's really what you want in, it's not a hybrid. Quick drying, durable, semi-gloss finish, that's your satin ward, so it's semi-gloss. Odorless and non-yellowing. We are sick of paints that go yellow, whether it be water-based or not. I'm even going to mention, you know, we did some sample paints of Dulux. I wasn't too happy. I wasn't too impressed with some of the Dulux paints. The Heritage, really liked. If you've not tried Heritage, give it a go, because that is a nice paint to apply. It's a nice finish. Looks good. You'll enjoy it. This WRX paint, what am I thinking about? After one coat, I'm thinking it's gone on quite nicely. It went, it brushed nicely. My coverage, I'm not expecting it to cover in one. Of course I'm not. We're going over that green, which was the Ticarilla Helmy. It's an undercoat. We wanted a dark colour. I can actually start seeing it going off. That's, that's a good sign. But for me, for what I'm testing, and some people have said, you can't test a paint on a door like this. I can. I can test a paint on a section of door because I know what I'm looking for. Let me tell you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a paint that goes on nice, we've mentioned about that. But when you're doing your mouldings and your panels and you come to the your rails and your mullion rails and your styles, these are your parts around it, if your bristles catch these mouldings, does it flash on it or is it still open? Is there still an open time with that paint that you can actually just quickly lay it back off and it doesn't affect the finish. Now you're going to go, what do you mean Phil? I'll give you an example. Farron Ball's modern eggshell is a lovely paint, but if I was painting a door with modern eggshell or doing kitchen units, when I hand paint kitchen units using Farron Ball's modern eggshell, and that's the one with a sheen, that's the one that they used to call floor paint. Controversial. There's a state eggshell and this modern eggshell. The modern eggshell's got a little bit more hard wearing sheen to it. If I was doing that with the Farron Ball, I would paint those mouldings and that panel, all of those, and leave them, go and do another door, let that go off and then come back. Because my fear is, if I catch a bristle doing these top rails, mullions and styles and bits and pieces here, if I catch that paint that's already started to go off, it can flash. If you don't know what flashing is, either Google it or I'll tell you, it looks like you've touched up paint that's dried and it shows where you've touched up. That, that's probably the easiest way of putting it. Now, this application, if I just caught it around the edges, it didn't seem to matter and it won't matter because it's that first coat. What I will be looking for on the next coat is how does it react? if I catch the bristles going around those mouldings. Does that make sense? Give us some comments. Do you, do you look at your paint thing in the same way as I am? I'm looking at, there's a bit of a sheen coming to that. It's quite good. Satin wood, I'd expect it. But let's come back later. Let's come back later and see what it's like and we can get another coat on. So um, go make a cup of tea, go and have a Kit Kat. Kit Kat's not sponsoring me either, so other biscuits are available. See you in a bit. Right, I'm on round two. It's been a... I'm not going to break it down into hours how long it's been since I've seen you, because obviously you've seen me straight away because I'm coming into set coat. It's not a bad finish. It's dried. Dried quite nicely, actually. Um, quite impressed with that. Let me just straighten my lens up a bit. It's uh, better. So I'm going to give it a second coat. Um, I did my talky talky on that first coat. I'm not going to talky talky on this one. I'm just going to get it coated up. We'll give a bit of a sum up and then uh, let it dry and then we'll come back to it. So um, see you after this speeded up version of me painting the door.
give you a bit of a initial thought on that. Do you know what? Other than a bit of Other than a bit of grinning there where my bristles have just caught that mould in and I go on about this all the time about how I can test what a paint is by these mouldings on Doris the Door. Other than a bit of bristle pulling off a bit of paint, do you know what? That two coats over that quite a deepish green hasn't covered bad at all. That's still in a wet state. I'm going to... I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna wait till it's dried. Let's see what it looks like. And if it needs a third coat, it will need a third coat. I'll see what it's like after two. I can give it a third coat and then I can give you a conclusion, but that's not a bad paint to apply over itself. It's not a bad paint to apply over something else. I don't wanna put, I love my Bedec. And if Bedec's watching, I really like my Bedec products. If Isomats watching, I love my Isomax products, the Isolac. You've seen those reviews there. I think the difference probably with Isolac, Isomat um, paint is that primer coat that you put on, primer coat and then two top coats, that primer coat is an adhesion primer as well. There's, there's an adhesion property to it. If you know about your WRX paint, can you tell me what's in that? Is there an adhesion property to it or would you need a specialist adhesion primer if you were going over some problem services for grip. I'm not sure, I don't know enough about the paint. As a paint that's a two coat paint, that's not bad. Would I call it on a par with MSP that goes over anything? Probably not. The Aqua Advanced was um, the Bedec undercoat and two top coats. They're both really nice paints. I've gone quiet. My stumbling block with this would be, where do you get it from? Give us some comments. I'll see in a bit. See in a bit. Where'd you get it from? That's the question. Where'd you get it from? Where can you get the pain? Back with you. That dry. Can I do a conclusion or? Thank you. Do you know what? I'm going to give it a third coat. It's not covered, but do you know what? It's a lovely finish, it's really nice, it's a nice satin finish. But to be fair, I knew I'd be giving it three, so do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give it three. I won't film that because you've seen me coating up the door, but I'll be back in a minute. Ah, he's back. Um, while I've been waiting for that to dry, I'm in my studio. I'm in my studio. <laughs> I'm in my studio. Um, I've got heaters on, so water-based paints, what do we say? <sighs> Touch dry half an hour, recoat time about four to six hours. I'll probably push the boundaries on this one because I've uh, warmed the air up and it's gone off quite quickly. While I've been waiting and while I've been got myself a drink, uh, just had a bit of a relax, I've washed my brush out. I have to say, being proper acrylic, acrylic-based product, that satin wood, Oh, I love smelling brush bristles. Oh, lovely. Smell your brush. Um, that washed out lovely. Bit of warm water, not too hot. You could start with a little bit of cold, wash the excess out and then build yourself up to warm. Not hot, just warm, lukewarm water. Bit of washing up liquid in it. Jobs are good. And if you've got a brush comb, that's ideal. I've not got my brush comb with me, but if you part your bristles, right, wash that really nice. Right, let's get back to this paint. Let's do a bit of a conclusion. That's had the third coat. I must say, I'm giving you here tips and tricks. Applying this, don't overwork it, don't overthink it, put enough on, don't be frightened to put a bit more paint on than you probably would normal. And that actually goes on really nice. You can probably see, uh, let me see if I can zoom in, this Canon camera. Lovely lens I bought last year. Um, what is it? Uh, 12, uh, no it's not, it's ooh, 11 to 22 wide. It's a really nice camera, camera lens. Um, you can probably just see the sheen on there. 
I'll have to explain it. It's be like black and white television and um, snooker. I'll explain which ball's where. It's actually gone really nice. I've got a little bit of a creep of a run just now. If it's soft enough, I'll just dob it out. Yeah, I've just caught it. Um, put enough on, get it covering. You would possibly have covered better with two coats if it have applied a bit more, but the way I felt the paint, bit of use of, a uh, bit of experience, I've put a bit more on for that third coat. But I have to say, I'm very impressed how those mouldings are. Don't forget, we are going over a darkish green, so an extra coat is quite possibly needed, whatever paint you were going to use. But this WRX paint, satin wood, am I impressed? Yes. I said before, where do you get it from? That's going to be the stumbling block for people. This fifth largest paint manufacturer in Europe. To get there up to that third position, you're going to need to get this in more shops. Can you get it in B&Q? Can you get it in Wix? Can you get it in the main um, wholesalers? Might be a bit more of a, spe a specialist paint supplier. But Google it. Y Yahoo it. I know Google's the main word to use when we say Google it. Dr. Google knows everything. But look, look out for it. If you're new to painting and you're trying different paints out and you've watched that playlist up there, give it a go. Get a little tin, see what you think. Everybody's going to have a different feel for what they want of a paint. I mentioned the words opacity and coverage, trying to blend it together to make it easy for you to understand. The coverage, stroke opacity on that, on white over that dot, very impressed. If you're going over a light creams, off whites, there's not going to be any problem with that, is it, for two coats? Surely not. Make sure you've got a nice brush, because that is... If, you, if you're using cheap... I know all about cheap, cheap brushes. I've done product testing with cheaper brushes. If you've got a real cheap brush, you're going to struggle whatever paint you've got. But let's just let's conclude this, because you're probably 20 minutes in, aren't you? That, and I'm looking across it on the side, because I can see whether that's covering or not. That's not bad coverage, opacity. That's, I'm happy with that. Feeling it, back of your hand. Always feel your paint from the back of your hand. The feel on that, satin wood's got a lovely finish. My only negative, and it's not a negative to put you off from the paint. I've pushed this, I, I've not left it four hours plus. I've been less than four hours, it's been dry. When you push paints to the for the limits, you might find it just, I don't want to use the word flashes, might just pull a bit on you, i.e. it's not easier, to, it's not as easy to apply. If you leave it for a longer period of time, particularly next day, if you come back to it next day, you'll probably say to yourself, it goes on a lot better, flows out around these edges and mouldings. But if that's my only criticism, I think we've done well. Somebody give me some comments. Have you used this paint? What sort of price are we looking at? Because this, these are sample paint pots I've got from the decorating show. How expensive is it? How does it compare against other brands? Why are you using this paint? What do you, comments, what do you think of it compared to others when you've tried them? Is it that little bit better? coverage opacity is it the price that makes you go for it and that's your compromise we're not talking about scuff x are we just under four liters really nice paint don't get me wrong lovely paint to apply lovely finish hard wearing 108 quid for a tin that's just under four liters that's an american gallon it's a lot of lot of money that is i know it's i always go on about your paint material price for a job is a small fraction of what the actual overall price of the job is, particularly against labour. But if you work in high-end work, you can lose it in. It doesn't matter when you put your quote together, it's allowed for. People who are looking for a two-coat paint process, would you be looking at this? Very good paint. There's other good paints out there, I've told you. I'm, I'm liking the paints I'm trying. There's some budget paints that we tried, the screw fix one. It's got its place. I mean, 20 quid odd for two and a half litres. It was nice, it's got its place. Is it as good as it? Of course it's not. Of course it's not. But 
for an amateur DIY that you just want a cheap paint, you go for something like that. You want that next level up? Have a look at this. It'd be interesting to know what it's like when I try later on the eggshell. The eggshell will be an interesting one, but on the whole, I'm pleased with that. I'm impressed. Do I still like my isomat? Of course I do. And my Bedex. Bedex. If you've used Bedex and this, how do you compare those? Because they're both nice, aren't they? Right, some videos there. I'll look at this till the cows come home. It's not bad. Just a little bit there. But videos there. Comments, like, subscribe. If you're liking this content, give us some thumbs up. But I'm glad I've tried it. I'm not going to knock it. It's a nice paint. Thank you very much, WRX Trade Paints.